call the dissatisfied satisfaction. That means we've got to be willing to trust God for more than we've ever had before. But if you never put your faith towards anything, you're never going to receive anything. And as a Christian, the world is watching us and saying, I can live a life just like they're living a life. Their life is no different from mine. Their life has no supernatural in it. Man, every time there's a catastrophe happening in their life, they react the same way I do. And God is declaring to us, it's time to be believers and not doubters. It's time to be people that will take God at his word and declare his word, stand in his word, rather than just sitting back and letting life fly. That's good preaching, whether you like it or not. Say amen. Amen. So many Christians are putting out fires all the way around their life, and they're never extending their faith. That's one. Matthew chapter 15, verse 28. Let's turn there real quickly. Matthew 15, verse 28. This is the Gentile woman. Remember, we talked about her. She pulled Jesus literally out of the age that he was in and into the age to come by her faith. And this is the declaration that Jesus said to her. Jesus answered in verse 28 and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very, very hour. There is a principle that we've got to lay hold of here, and that is we've got to be believers. We've got to start believing God for greatness. We've got to start believing God for supernatural. We've got to start believing God for something we cannot do ourselves. Well, I don't want to be disappointed, and you won't be. You don't ever have to worry about being disappointed if you never believe God. But man, you're going to live a boring Christian lifestyle. I'd rather step out on nothing and try to land on something. Come on now. I'd rather be a believer than a doubter any day. I'd rather be somebody that's willing to step out and fall than somebody who's never willing to step out at all. We'll just take Jack as an example. Jack, come here. Jack, this guy here, you got to hear his story. He is a very brilliant man. He really he is very brilliant. And he's got these business ideas that can generate Yes, exactly. <laughs> Many big M's. Yes. And you know, some people have looked at him and said, well, you know, Jack, you're kind of stupid. You know, you could have just had a secular job and you could have made, you know, 90 to $150,000 and or more and just sat back and relaxed. And he's going, no, but I got vision. I've got belief. I've got something that I'm aiming at. And he's believing God. And you know what? Listen now, you know what I'm saying? They've almost lost their house once. They've, they've come in hard times more than once and they've come into the office and they've said, oh, pastor. And Jack has gotten discouraged a few times and we built each other up in the faith. And you know what he said? I'm not giving up. And his wife has said, I'm not giving up. And man, God is moving in his life. I'm believing that he's gonna be the first million dollar check in the house. Amen. I'm believing God, the first million dollar check. I believe in God for that. Well, why is that? I want him blessed. Why? Because he was willing to step out on nothing. And even if he failed, he still did something. Give me a hundred people that are willing to fall on their face and make a mistake than a hundred people that are going to curl up in a little ball and hope everything just works out. Are you with me now? Am I preaching a faith message right now? You better believe I am. Faith, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse six, without faith, it's impossible to please God. How many of you want to please God? Then you've got to be willing to step out on nothing. You've got to be willing to step out on God's principles. You've got to be willing to call those things which are not as though they already are. You've got to be willing to believe beyond the natural thought process. You've got to believe that God is able. And if he's not, then really he's just a weak little theology that we put in our back pocket and we hope to get out of hell with. Ooh, That just slid out. (laughs) Do you feel it? (laughs) Mark chapter 10. Turn there with me real quickly. I wanted to show you not once but twice that really we are the people that determine what we're receiving. While I've gotten successful, I haven't needed God this far. Baby, you better hope you better not be saying that too loud. You make yourself a little target and without God on your side, you're going to get shot. 
You don't want to become the target of the devil. Say amen. amen. Well, you know, I, you know I'm a preacher. You just got to understand. I remember sitting down to eat at a family one time, and I heard this exact statement. I said, well, the, somebody said, well, let's open in prayer. And the father spoke up, and he says, we don't need to pray to God. I'm the one who provided it. Listen, now, we can owe all we want to that guy, but the reality is so many of us live that same principle. We might not say that, but we become our own God in our own finances. Oh, 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 oh. We become our own God in our own families. We become our own God in our own religion as long as we keep Jesus to get us out of hell. Oh, come on now. That's really good preaching. So as a Christian, it's time for us to grow up and mature and to step into a new realm in a relationship with Jesus Christ that what he says he will do. And if God said it, I don't care what's happening around me. I cannot be moved. My feet are solid on the rock, Christ Jesus. My feet are solid on the word of God. I will stand and I am not going to give up no matter what the circumstances declare, no matter what the doctor says. I'd rather die a believer any day than die a doubter. And I'm going to go with Jesus all the way. And I don't care what anybody makes fun of me. I don't care what anybody says about me. I am going to believe. There are not a lot of Christians like that these days. But of course, there are not a lot of faith messages being preached either. Mark chapter 10 verse 54 says this. Hey, could be 52. (laughs) We all know the story of blind Bartimaeus. Hear what Jesus said to him. Jesus said to him, go your way, your faith has made you well. Faith plays a massive part in whether we're going to receive or not. And again, what is faith? Faith is calling those things which are not as though they already are, which means what? We've got to have some kind of foundation to stand upon, to believe upon. And that's what the word of God is all about. When you know the word of God, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the father, but by me, the word life deals with you and I having Zoe or the God kind of life. You and I, now that we're born again, we don't have just the life of the world, but we have the God life. Amen. Because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There's nothing impossible if I only believe. Why is that even feasible? Well, not because I'm some religious fool that goes to a church that calls its name his tabernacle, but because I'm a son of God filled with the Holy Ghost and with power. My God lives inside of me. I'm possessed by Jesus himself through the Holy Ghost, and I can do anything if I just believe. Difference between being religious and understanding who you are. And it's all rack and pinion on do you know the word? And then do you want to obey the word? Let's ponder that one. Selah. (laughs) It's not just hearing the word, but obeying the word. It's just not hearing the word, but obeying the word. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Just give me a moment. Thank you very much for watching this week at His Tabernacle. Make sure you zoom in next week for the completion of this message. What happens is this, is as a Christian, get used to it. (laughs) What happens as a Christian, we just get in the mode of, well, I like all the promises, but I can do anything I want. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. There is a life that needs to be led to be participating with the promises. If my children lie to me, it's not that I don't love them, but I am not going to bless them. They're going to their room. Give me your phone. You're grounded. And if you lie to me good enough, get me my belt. I'm coming on over. Not too many years ago, my son is 17, I had him drop his drawers, bend over, and touch my ankles. Why is that? Because there are times that discipline is necessary to accomplish the task. 
Now, whether you believe in corporate or not, that's up to you and your family. But what I'm trying to get across in the principle is this, is if you think you're going to be able to run around in sin, do whatever you want, and then grasp a hold of the promises of God, shazam, it's time to wake up.